ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだこんにちは。In particular, the mysterious black light that he saw when he and Yuraraka combined attacks. He is lying on his bed, thinking to himself, Izuku, I wonder what was that light? It couldn't be a quirk, I mean, I used it too. Could it be something related to cursed energy? The door to his room opens. Dojo, yo, you okay? Izuku, oh, Gojo sensei. Gojo, sorry I'm late, that rat Nezu held me back with some boring meeting. Izuku, I think he's more of a chimera than a rat. Gojo, huh? Really? Izuku, yeah, he's a combination of a dog, a mouse, and a bear. Gojo, I see. Izuku, hey Gojo sensei, could I ask you something? Gojo, huh? Sure, what's up? Izuku, well, a couple of days ago I saw this weird black light being used by my classmate during one of our classes. I was wondering if you knew what it was. Gojo stares at him intensely. Izuku, huh? What's wrong? Gojo, you're sure it was a black light, you weren't hallucinating. Izuku, no I wasn't. Gojo, I see. Well Izuku, that black light you saw was a phenomenon called black flash. Izuku, black flash. Gojo, you see, despite some jujutsu sorcerers having ample amounts of cursed energy, our physical strength is only slightly increased when applying cursed energy into our physical attacks. In a battle of close quarters combat, black flash is a game changer. Izuku, huh, why? Gojo, you see, Black Flash greatly amplifies the users when is applied to it within one millionth of a second. Izuku, one millionth of a second. Gojo, yep, though it does surprise me that your friend was able to use it. I didn't think there would be another person with a high amount of cursed energy at that school. Izuku, I don't even think she knew herself. Gojo, hm, I'd like to meet her. Izuku, seriously. Gojo, yep, having some people capable of using cursed energy would be beneficial. Makes teaching at UA more interesting. Izuku, just what goes on in that head of yours. We cut to the next day, with Izuku walking to the UA campus. Yuraraka, hey Gojo. Izuku, hum. Oh hey Yuraraka, what's up? Yuraraka, nothing much, I was just walking to school and I saw you. So I figured why not we both walk to school together. Izuku, that's a little random, but okay. The two begin walking together. Izuku, hey Yuraraka. Yuraraka, what's up? Izuku, did you happen to see a black light during our match? Yuraraka, hum. Now that you mention it, I do remember seeing a bright light, but I was too focused on beating them that I didn't notice. Why do you ask? Izuku, well, I talked with my dad about it, and he said he was interested in meeting you. Yuraraka, huh? Why? Izuku, I told him about the light, and he was interested in seeing it. So he wanted to see you and see if he could help you get a handle on it. Yuraraka, but didn't you do that? Izuku, I did, but you also used it. Yuraraka, I did. Izuku, yeah. Yuraraka couldn't help but be confused, but still was happy regardless. Yuraraka, I see. Then sure, I'll talk with him. Izuku, you will. Yuraraka, sure if he's anything like you then I bet he's also pretty cool. Izuku has a weird feeling in his stomach. Izuku, okay then, let's get to class quick, before Mr. Aizawa expels us. Yuraraka, oh shoot, I forgot about that. Let's go. While running, Izuku couldn't help but wonder what that feeling was in his stomach. When they arrive at the school, they see the gate flooded with news reporters trying to swarm any student they came across. Yuraraka, oh dear, looks like we can't avoid them, huh? Izuku, huh? Why not? Yuraraka, they'll want to ask us questions. Izuku, hum. Maybe not. Yuraraka, huh? Before she could react, Izuku picks her up and jumps over the school gate. News reporter, what the hell? That kid just jumped several feet. Izuku lands safely on the ground. Izuku, there, much better. Now quick, let's get to class, otherwise we're dead. He runs to the classroom, while Yuraraka could only watch in amazement. The students sit at their seats inventively talking amongst their various established friend groups. Kaminari, man, did you guys see the media wave this morning? It was really stressing me out. Who would have thought that they were willing to break down the school gate to get in here? Momo, well it does make sense, after all if the number one hero announced he became a school teacher, they would want to know the details behind it. Jiru, though it is kind of annoying, I mean, they nearly mauled me just because they wanted to know some stuff about him. 
Pagacure. Well, I do think it was a surprise. After all, I don't usually get people wanting an interview with me. It was kind of exciting. Ajiro. Do I need to point out that you're invisible? The door to their classroom bursts open. Aizawa. All right, class, settle down. The class remains in total silence at the words of their teacher. Aizawa, silence. Good. Now then, before we conduct business as normal, each of you will be given a task. This task will decide your future. Everyone, is it another quirk test? Aizawa, you all need to pick a class representative. Everybody, oh good, just normal school stuff. Su, uh, sir, why did you say that this will decide our future if it's just normal school stuff? Aizawa, that's a good question, Miss Asui. Picking a class representative ultimately decides who you want to represent your class to the public. The public's perception of you and your class is reflected through that representative. Should you pick poorly, the public will view you as such. They will think you're incapable of being fully-fledged pros if their views of you are poor. So be wise as to who you want to represent your class. Upon hearing this, Kirishima gets up from his seat and declared his desire to be class rep. Kirishima, pick me, I'll be class rep. Kaminari, me too. Jiru in a monotone voice also declares her desire. Jiru, I want to do it as well. One by one, each member of the class declared that they wanted to be class rep, even the Bakugo twins. Izuku, if one of them became class rep, we'd all be hated. Ida, silence everyone please. Everyone was startled to hear Ida yell, even Izuku, who found it more annoying. Ida, a class representative's job is to lead, not anyone can just do that. You need trust from the people you are leading, therefore we will do this democratically. We will hold an election. Sue, but we've only known each other for a few days. Hiroshima, besides, those that are left will probably vote for themselves. Even the guys that aren't left might just vote for themselves. Ida, but that means that those with multiple votes are by far the most suited for the job. Is that okay Mr. Aizawa? Aizawa, size just do what you want. And finish already, we've got more important business to do. Ida, thank you for your cooperation sir. After some time the votes pour in with Tenya Ida being elected as class rep and Momo coming in a close second. Aizawa, okay, so our class rep is Tenya Ida and Momo Yeyarazu as deputy. Ida couldn't help but smile at this result. Ida, thank you for this honor. I humbly accept. I will perform to the best of my ability. Izuku sits there unfazed by this reaction. We enter the cafeteria. Izuku sits on a table alone. Izuku, hum. I heard there was a good machai store just a little bit from UA. I might go there once school is over. Uh, hey, is it okay if we sit here? He looks up to see two people, that being Shinso and Monoma. Izuku, sure, why not? Shinso, nice to meet you, I'm Hitoshi Shinso from the general studies class. Monoma, and you already know who I am. Izuku, yeah, Nito Monoma from class 1B right. Sorry I couldn't join your class. Monoma, well as long as you know who the superior class is I don't hold any grudge against you. Izuku, well it's nice to meet you Shinso, I'm Satoru Gojo from class 1A. Shinso, you waiting on someone? Izuku, not really, but I don't mind who comes here to sit. Shinso, cool. As the two sit down, Yuraraka walks to the table with Ida close behind. Yuraraka, hey Gojo. Izuku, oh hey Yuraraka and. Izuku, who are you again? Ida, we're classmates. How did you forget already? Izuku, sorry, I'm just bad with names. Ida, I see. Well, I'm Tenya Ida. Izuku, it's nice to finally get acquainted with you. Come join us. He pats the seats next to him. Monoma, they can sit with us as long as they know who the superior hero class is. The two sit down at the table. Yuraraka, by the way, Shinso right. Where do you get those tattoos near your mouth? Shinso, oh these. They are associated with my quirk. Izuku, well those are funky looking tattoos. What's your quirk called? Shinso, it's called brainwashing. It allows me to put someone in a state where they are forced to obey whatever I command. However, I can only activate this power when my target verbally responds to something I say. Izuku, I see. Shinso, the doctor said that these tattoos were just an aesthetic that came with it. Izuku, you didn't try removing it. Shinso, no, when teachers tried to, they realized that couldn't. So they asked me to wear a mask over my mouth to not get in trouble. Izuku, that's pretty dumb, otherwise they can't hear you. Shinso, you said it. Monoma, did you try looking at your family history to see if someone from your family had an identical quirk? or something similar. Shinso, nope. Unfortunately, there were no records of the quirks my family had. Izuku, well that sucks. By the way, word of advice, if you run into them, 
He points towards Izumi, Katsumi, and Katsuki. Izuku, you might want to wear earplugs. Shinso, why? Izuku, you'll thank me later. Shinso is confused by this. Shinso, I'll take it under advisement. Shortly after, the school's security system goes off and shenanigans start as the students flood the halls. Thankfully, thanks to Ida's quick thinking, he tells the students that no threat has broken into the school, but was just the media. We cut back to the classroom. Aizawa, now that you have decided who your class rep will be, it's time to get back to business. For your next lesson, you will be undergoing some special training that will help you in the future of your career. Kaminari, what kind of training, sir? Aizawa, rescue training. You will be simulating situations that can happen at an undisclosed UA facility. Shipwrecks, earthquakes, that kind of stuff. Hiroshima, cool, proper hero work. Kaminari, sounds awesome. Mina, heck yeah. Aizawa, however, due to the incident that happened this morning regarding the media, things will be different from here on. Ajiro, different how? Aizawa, good question Ajiro, you'll have three instructors. Me, All Might and another faculty member will be keeping tabs on your performance at an off-site facility. Ida, I see, it's to make sure nothing goes wrong during our training. Aizawa, correct Ida, the principal believed this was the best way to keep you guys safe without causing too much change to your training. We did have Green Empress on call, but due to something that came up, she wasn't able to assist us. Now get your hero costumes on and meet at the front, we will be taking a bus to get there. Each student grabs their individual costume cases and changes into their hero costumes before making their way to the bus. Ida, everyone, I want you all to be lined by in a single file line, then board the bus in an appropriate manner. Hiroshima, but the bus is big enough for two lines Ida. Ida reacts in shock and frustration at himself. Izumi, what do you guys think the third teacher is going to be? Katsumi, I just hope this training is good. The bus travels for what seems to be 45 minutes with each student sitting with their respective groups, but eventually arrive the facility. Hello everyone, I've been waiting for you. Everyone begins to drop their jaws in awe. Izumi, it's the space hero, 13. The chivalrous hero who has saved hundreds of people across the world. Iroraka, OMG, it's actually 13. She's one of my favorite heroes. 13, I can't wait to show you what's inside. Everybody, this is gonna be awesome. They enter the building to see a large area with various sections. Hiroshima, holy crap. This place looks like an amusement park. 13. A shipwreck, a landslide, a fire, a windstorm, etc. I created this training facility to prepare you to deal with different types of disasters. I call it the unforeseen simulation joint, but you can just call it USJ. Everybody, just like Universal Studios Japan. Aizawa, hey shouldn't All Might be here already? Let me guess he booked an interview instead. 13. Actually, it's something else. Apparently he did too much hero work on the way to school this morning and used up all his power. He's resting in the teacher's lounge. Aizawa, that man is the height of irresponsibility. Oh well should be fine with just the two of us. Clock's ticking, we should get started. 13. Excellent. Before we begin, let me just say one thing. Well, maybe two things, possibly three, four or five. Everybody, we get it. 13. Listen carefully, I'm sure that you're aware that I have a powerful quirk. It's called Black Hole. I can use it to suck up anything and turn it to dust. Izumi, yeah, you've used your quirk to save people from all kinds of disasters, haven't you? 13. That's true, but my quirk could also be used very easily to kill. Some of you also have powers that can be dangerous. In our superhuman society, all quirks are certified and regulated, so we often overlook how unsafe they can actually be. Please don't forget that if you lose focus or make the wrong move, your powers can be deadly even if you're trying to do something virtuous like rescue someone. Thanks to Aizawa's fitness tests you have been made aware of the potential your quirk have. And because of All Might's combat training, you likely experienced how dangerous your powers may actually be when used against other people. Carry those lessons over to this class. Today, you're going to learn how to use your quirks to save people's lives. You won't be using your powers to attack enemies, only to help. After all, that's what being a hero is all about, ensuring the safety of others. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening. The students begin to cheer. Hiroshima, hey, um can I ask a question 13? 13, sure thing young man, go ahead. Hiroshima, if we aren't going to use our quirks to attack people, then. He points to the bottom of the stairs. Hiroshima, then what's going on down there? 13, what do you mean? Both 13 and Aizawa turn around to see a purple mist looking circle, hovering in front of the fountain. The purple mist circle expanding until a man covered in many hands emerges from the portal. 
Aizawa gets in a battle stance. Aizawa, stay together and don't move. 13. Protect the students. Kirishima looks on, before he begins to walk slowly towards the stairs. Kirishima, whoa. Who the heck are they? Has the training started already? Aizawa, stay back. Hiroshima, being shocked by his teacher's shouting stops in place as Aizawa dons his signature goggles. Aizawa, this is real. Those are villains. The class display a look of shock on their faces as they look on in fear. Hirajiri, the only real heroes I see are 13 and Eraserhead. How perplexing. The schedule we received from UA said that All Might would be here as well. Aizawa, so you scumbags used the press as a cover and snuck onto campus. The man covered in hands stands tall. Shigaraki, where is he? I went through the trouble of bringing so many of my friends to meet him. They want All Might, the great symbol of peace and he's not even here. Maybe if I kill a few of these kids he'll come out to play. Kirishima, what? Real villains. No way. How could so many of them get into a UA facility this secure? Momo, yeah, 13, why aren't the alarms going on? 13, good question. And not sure. The students are somewhat worried by those words. Todoroki, is the entire campus under attack? Or is this their only target? Either way, if the alarm sensors haven't been triggered, then one of these villains must have a quirk that's masking their presence. They carefully chose this isolated facility as an entry point at a time when class was being taught. They're fools for trespassing here, but they thought this out. Whatever their plan, they must have a concrete objective in mind. But what is it? Aizawa walks past 13. Aizawa, 13, get them out of here and alert the main campus. Actually, if they have the ability to block our main sensors, they might be jamming our regular communications too. Kaminari, try using your quirk to contact the school. Kaminari, yes sir. He attempts to communicate to the school via his communicator. Izumi, what are you going to do? You can't fight them on your own. There's too many of them. Even if you can nullify their quirks, your fighting style is not suited for this. Your power works best in stealth and one-on-one -on -one fights. It's not going to help with a group. Aizawa turns to the teen, wearing his signature goggles. Aizawa, no good pro is a one-trick pony. I'll leave it to you 13. He jumps from the top of the stairs and makes his way to the villains. Victor, shooting squad, take your aim. Needle hair, didn't our intel say it was just going to be 13 and all might out here? Who is that? Stitch giant, don't recognize him. But if he thinks he can take us down easy, then he's dead. Let's gun him down. Victor tries to shoot his finger guns, but no shots are fired. Victor, my quirk. Stitch giant, where are my bullets? Aizawa using his capture scarf wraps them around the three villains and slams them to the ground. Uh, those idiots, that's a racer head, a pro. He can cancel your quirks just by looking at you. Steel bulwark, cancellation. The villain begins rushing towards Aizawa. Steel bulwark. Bet you can't erase the quirk of a heteromorphic type like me can you? Aizawa, yeah, you're right. He punches the villain in the face sending him flying. Aizawa, but a villain like you is only dangerous if he you can reach me. He dodges an attack from a villain behind him and kicks him in the face. Aizawa, good thing that I have taken measures to make sure that never happens. He throws the villains into each other. Aizawa, now which one of you gutter punks is next? Shigaraki, there he goes, trying to intimidate us. He is strong, and since he's hiding behind those goggles, you can't tell whose quirk he's erasing. He's making it hard for us to work together or rely on each other's powers. How annoying. The worst thing about dealing with pros is when they live up to all of their hype. We cut back to the top of the stairs. Izumi, whoa, he's holding them off. I guess I shouldn't have underestimated him. Ida, Yagi, this is no time to be analyzing. We have to go. Izumi, right. While the students make their way to the USJ entrance, the same purple mist that brought the villains inside blocks their escape. Kurajiri, there is no escape for you. Aizawa, damn, I blinked and the guy that seems the most trouble got away. Kurajiri, it's a pleasure to meet you, we are the League of Villains. I know it's impolite, but we decided to invite ourselves into this haven of justice to say hello. And besides, isn't this a fitting place for All Might, the symbol of peace to take his last breath? Kurajiri, I believe he was supposed to be here today and yet I see no sign of him. There must have been some sort of change in plans we could not have foreseen. Ah, well, in the end, I suppose it doesn't really matter. I still have a role to play. Without hesitation, Kirishima and Katsuki rush towards the villain in hopes of landing a hit on him. Katsuki, causing a huge explosion in the process. Kirishima, did you think we were just going to stand around and let you tear this place to shreds? The dust settles to see the missed villain known as Kirijiri, unfazed. Kirijiri, you live up to your school's reputation. But you should be more careful, children. Otherwise, someone might get hurt. 13. You two, get out of the way right now. 
Tirajiri. I'll scatter you across this facility to meet my comrades and your deaths. The purple mist begins to surround them and cover any glimpse of their surroundings. Hiroshima, crap, what is this? Ida, through quick thinking, grabs Ajiro and Sato. Shoji covers Mina and Siro, while the others can only stand there, not moving. Ida looks on at the purple dome surrounding his classmates. Ida, what's going on? The portal opens above a small building, where Izuku and Yuraraka fall onto the rooftop. Yuraraka, oh, my head. Gojo, are you okay? Izuku, yeah, I'm alright, though, I'm going to be honest, it seems we're in a bit of trouble. Yuraraka, how did we get here? Izuku, that purple mist guy must have some sort of teleport quirk. Sighs whelp, so much for an easy lesson plan, but I think this could be fun. Yuraraka, okay, first things first, we should probably find a way down before we get surrounded. Maybe if we can jump over to that next building, we can. Izuku, or, we can go through this door that's open. Iroraka looks back, dumbfounded that she didn't try to open the door. Iroraka, that's probably a better idea. The two head down the building and eventually make it to the fake street. Iroraka, okay, now that we're on the ground, we should probably head back to the others. Izuku, probably for the best. The sooner we get back, the sooner we can stop this nonsense. While they walk through the streets, shadows can be seen moving on the rooftops of the buildings. Izuku sees this and turns his head in the direction. Iroraka, hum, what's wrong? Izuku, nothing. I just have a feeling. Yuraraka, a feeling of what? Izuku, that we're being followed. Suddenly, several villains drop down from the rooftops and surround the pair. The leader of the group of villains, Sharp Blade, slowly approach them. Sharp Blade, well well, looks like we have a pair of victims for us to cut down. Nothing personal kids, just doing my job. Izuku, they were hiding at the rooftops, huh? Cowards, well if I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's really pathetic that you needed this many people to take down two children. The villains get annoyed by this. Sharp blade. So, you think we're cowards, huh? Izuku. Yuraraka, when I give you the signal, I want you to punch the ground and run out of here. Yuraraka, what? What about you? Izuku, I'll be fine. Besides, I'm finding this fun. Izuku shows off his devilish grin. Sharp blade. Well, let's see if your bark is as good as your bite. Sharp blade rushes towards the pair. Izuku, now. Yuraraka, right. She punches the ground causing the ground to shatter around them. Yuraraka jumps over them and runs towards the exit. Sharp blade, damn it. Get her. Some of the villains run to catch her. Sharp blade, that was pretty stupid of you to separate from one another. Izuku, well, I just didn't want her witnessing what I am going to do to you. Besides, it's much easier to take you guys down. Sharp blade, you must not understand. We outnumber you ten to one. Izuku, huh? Well I should tell you something important. He takes off his blindfold. Izuku, I like those odds. The villains get somewhat scared by this response. Sharp Blade, what are you idiots waiting for? Get him. The villains rush towards him and Izuku just stands there, until he raises his hand. Izuku, Jutsushiki Junta now. The villains running towards him suddenly start getting pulled into each other, some even breaking their limbs as a result. Sharp Blade, what the hell? What happened? Izuku, seeing as though you couldn't see my attack, allow me to explain it to you. My attack called Blue brings the concepts of negative numbers and negative distance into reality, forcing real space to compensate and fill in the area by drawing everything toward the impossibility, to put it in a way that can even help idiots like you understand. I created a mini black hole that caused your comrades to be pulled together. Though, you should feel lucky, if I put more strength to it, there would be a lot more damage than just broken limbs. They could implode instantly and turn into meatballs. Sharp Blade, damn it. I'll kill you. Sharp Blade rushes towards Izuku and attempts to stab him. But the blade slows down appearing to have stopped entirely. Sharp Blade, what? Izuku, and that's why someone like you is weak when compared to someone like me. How can you kill something you can't hit? He throws his fist towards the villain and lands a hit on his face. Izuku, Kokusen. The villain gets sent flying into a building and is found unconscious. Izuku, huff, good thing I held back, I could have really caused some damage. Plus, if I killed him, I probably would be kicked out. Oh yeah, he sent some goons after Yuraraka, I should catch up with her. He runs in the direction where Yuraraka ran to. When he reaches the exit, he sees Yuraraka standing over the bodies of the villains chasing her. Yuraraka, Gojo, I'm glad you're safe. Izuku, ha, huh? remind me not to make you mad. Yuraraka, what's up? Izuku, nothing, let's get out of here. Yuraraka, good idea. Before they could run out of the disaster zone, 
both feel the presence of something sinister. Both turn back to see monstrosities. However, Izuku recognizes them as curses. Iroraka begins to panic in fear. Iroraka, what are they? Izuku, why are there curses in a place like this? Iroraka, you get out of here and get to the others. Izuku, right. She runs out of the zone. Izuku, you guys really did come at a bad time. Oh well, I'll make this quick. Izuku, Jutsushiki Junta now. The deformed monstrosities are pulled together and implode on each other and blood begins bursting from their corpses, however, they don't disappear. Izuku, huh, weird. The curse that Gojo Sensei defeated before disappeared. Why aren't these curses disappearing? I'll have to ask him later. He runs out of the disaster zone, with that detail on his mind. When he reaches the stairs, he sees a weird creature standing over Aizawa. Izuku, the hell is that thing? He runs up the stairs to see Uraraka freaking out. Uraraka, Gojo. Izuku, hum. Uraraka, we have a problem. Izuku, what is it? Ida, we can't get out. Izuku, ha. Huh. Ida points to the open door where it is covered by a black substance. He touches the substance and it zaps him. Izuku, what the? Why is this familiar? Ida, they've trapped us in here. Mina, we'll never get out. Siro, calm yourself. Izuku looking at the substance realizes why is the substance is familiar. Flashback. Izuku, Gojo Sensei. Gojo, hum. Izuku, what techniques can a person do if they haven't inherited a curse technique? Gojo, hum. Yeah. Izuku, really? Gojo, Jujutsu sorcerers that don't have an inherent technique will become Shikigami users. They primarily focus on long range combat. However, most Jujutsu sorcerers are also able to use what is called a curtain. Izuku, ha, a curtain, Gojo, think of it like a barrier that can keep stuff in and out. Jujutsu sorcerers primarily use it to keep curses in an area so they don't escape. But, a curse user who uses a barrier uses it to trap people in and let curses kill them. Flashback end. Izuku, so this isn't a quirk. Someone's put a barrier down. This also explains why there were curses there. Someone amongst this league of villains is a curse user. But who? There's nothing we can do at the moment. We just have to hold out until the heroes come. Ida, but they don't even know we're in danger. How are you certain they'll come to help us? Izuku, trust me Ida. They'll come. We cut to Gojo and the other teachers having a meeting regarding the gate at the front of the school being destroyed. Nezu, okay, repairs for the gate will take a couple of days. So for now, we'll need to have at least two teachers standing at the gate making sure no suspicious individuals get inside the school. Midnight, it does surprise me that someone would go ahead and destroy the gate. Why do you think they did it? Present Mike, people can be whack sometimes, I wouldn't worry about it. The teachers continue to talk amongst themselves, with Gojo just sitting there bored out of his mind. Gojo, geez, it's like dealing with the higher-ups. If only things were more exciting here. Snipe, by the way, Principal Nezu, have you heard anything from Aizawa and 13? Nezu, well, I haven't for a while, but I believe they'll contact me if they need anything. Midnight, you sure that's a good idea Nezu? I mean, with what happened to the gate this morning, shouldn't we at least send someone down to check on them? At least we'll know if they're still okay. Toshinori gets up from his chair. Toshinori, I'll go. Nezu, no you won't. Toshinori, but why Principal Nezu? Nezu, you still don't have enough energy to maintain your form. After all the good you did this morning, you need your rest. Don't worry Toshinori, I'm sure it's not anything too serious. Gojo, Gojo, hum. Nezu, I want you to go down to the USJ and see if Aizawa and 13 are doing okay. As soon as you can confirm that, give us a call. Gojo, sure, anything to get out of this boring meeting. Gojo gets up from his chair and leaves the room. Vlad, you know, that guy is irritating. Snipe, why do you say that? Vlad, the guy has no respect for authority whatsoever. Midnight, but I must admit, he does scale well on the good looks. Vlad, good looks mean nothing when assessing a hero. He acted as if this meeting was a waste of his time. Why is he even a teacher here? Nezu, because the Public Safety Commission recommended it. The teachers are curious about this. Snipe, why did they personally recommend him? Nezu, because, the results he got for his assessment were near higher than all might. All the teachers begin to scream in shock at this, even Toshinori was shocked. Nezu, despite how he acts, he is a good asset to us, because in his own words, he is the strongest. Back at the USJ, the students while hopeful at Izuku's words are still worried for their teacher. Aizawa, ah, Shigaraki, you can erase other people's powers, that's irritating but it's nothing impressive. When faced with true devastating power, you might as well be a quirkless child. Aizawa turns to the Namu and tries to erase his quirk, but the Namu slams his foot onto his other arm. Aizawa, he's breaking my bones like they're twigs. I'm positive I erased his quirk. That means he's super strong, even without powers. I think he's as strong as all might. 
The Namu continuously slams his head into the ground. Minta, no, no, I can't watch this anymore. One, we should be getting out of here super fast. Sue, Ribbit, Izumi, I can't, I can't just sit here and let him die. I have to do something. Kirajiri teleports to Shigaraki. Shagarki, ah Kirajiri, did you manage to kill 13? Kirajiri, 13 is out of commission, and the students are trapped thanks to the barrier. Shigaraki begins to scratch his neck in frustration. Shigaraki, and you didn't kill them. Kirajiri, you idiot, if you weren't our warp gate I'd tear every last atom from your body. He continues to scratch his neck, but stops. Shigaraki, no matter, the pros don't even know we're here. But why just kill the teacher? Kirajiri, what do you intend to do? Shigaraki, before we leave, let's make sure the symbol of peace is broken. He turns to the three students hiding in the water. Shigaraki, let's wreck his pride. In what felt like a split second, Shigaraki is in front of Tsu, Minta and Izumi attempting to disintegrate Tsu. He touches her face, but nothing happens. Shigaraki, you really are so cool. Eraser head. Aizawa can be seen trying his best to keep eye contact on Shigaraki, but his head gets slammed on the ground. Izumi jumps from the water and attempts to punch Shigaraki. Izumi, crap 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 crap. This guy is clearly dangerous. I've got to save Asui and get us out of here. You, let her go now. Smash. The force of her punch caused a burst of wind to send the villains around them flying. When the smoke clears, we see that the Namu that had blocked the attack has been pushed back significantly. Shigaraki, you're pretty powerful, this smash of yours. Are you one of All Might's disciples? It doesn't matter, I'm done with you. The Namu rushes towards Izumi grabbing her arm and starts slamming her into the ground. Five the Namu holds her, bloodied and her right arm broken. Shigaraki, good job Namu, kill her. The Namu is about to give her the finishing blow. Izuku, yo. Shigaraki, huh. The three villains look at him in curiosity. Izumi, Gojo. Shigaraki, wait, Gojo. So that's him. Izuku, I don't mean to interrupt this, but seeing you use a pet instead of fighting yourself, that's kind of sad. Shigaraki, what? Izuku, hey, I'm not saying you aren't threatening. With all those hands on you, you definitely look like someone people shouldn't mess with. But let's be honest, you only want to get your hands dirty when you know you can win. Against someone like me, you stand no chance. Shigaraki is infuriated by this. Shigaraki, Namu. Kill him. The Namu drops Izumi and rushes towards Izuku attempting to land an attack on him. However, the attack doesn't touch him. Shigaraki, so it is true what Master said, you have a barrier that protects you from most attacks. Izuku, you know, considering you brought this thing with you, I'm guessing this thing was your plan to kill All Might. Let's see how I do against it. Izuku, Kokusen. The Namu gets sent back from the force of the attack. Izuku, Kokusen. Izuku, Kokusen. The Namu gets sent back to where Shigaraki is standing. Shigaraki, all your attacks won't work on him, he has shock absorption. Izuku, welp, guess I'll have to go all out. The Namu prepares to rush Izuku, with him motioning his hands, ready to attack. Izuku, Jutsushiki Junten. The sky above them brightens up as the curtain trapping them is destroyed. Shigaraki, what? The group stare up at the sky to see a man floating above them. Gojo, guess I made it on time. We see Gojo running in the direction of the USJ. Gojo, I won't lie, this campus is pretty large, but it's still small in comparison with Jujutsu High. He continues to run until he sees the USJ, covered in the black substance. Gojo, hum, what's going on here? He walks up to the black substance and instantly knows what's going on. Gojo, a curtain. So this is why Aizawa hasn't made any contact. Someone set up this curtain to block their communication with the rest of the campus. Gojo looks up and teleports to the top of the USJ. Gojo, guess it's time I make my debut to these students. We cut to the inside of the USJ. Shigaraki, all your attacks won't work on him, he has shock absorption. Izuku, welp, guess I'll have to go all out. The Namu prepares to rush Izuku, with him motioning his hands, ready to attack. Izuku, Jutsushiki Junten. The sky above them brightens up as the curtain trapping them is destroyed. The group stare up at the sky to see a man floating above them. Gojo, guess I made it on time. Gojo looks on at the entire facility and sees the destruction. Gojo, these guys certainly did a lot of damage on the place. Hmm, he sees Izuku looking exhausted and teleports to him. 1. Izuku, Gojo Sensei. Shigaraki, so this is him. Master warned me that there was a new hero going by that name. And from his reaction, he looked scared. But why? Gojo turns his head towards Izuku. Gojo, you've been using blue a lot, haven't you? Izuku, yeah. Gojo, you should head back with the others, otherwise you'll run out of stamina. Izuku, but, Gojo, don't worry, I've got this. Besides, you're about to witness one of my most powerful techniques. Izuku, technique. 
Gojo, I won't give you a lengthy explanation. I'll just let you watch what this bad boy can do. For now, grab Aizawa and that girl, head back with the others. Izuku, you got it. Come on you two. Sue, right. Minta, yes please. The three grab Izumi and Aizawa as they make their way up to the rest of the class. Gojo picks up his phone. Shigaraki, what are you? Gojo, give me a sec. Sorry, the reception isn't really as good as it used to. He makes a call. Gojo, hey Nezu. Nezu, hello Gojo. Gojo, listen, I'm going to need you to send all the teachers here at SAP. Nezu, is there something wrong? Gojo, looks like they were under attack by some villains. Nezu, I see, will come as soon as possible. Just hold out until then. Gojo, don't worry, I'll take care of things here before you even arrive. He ends the call. Shigaraki, you really think you can defeat us on your own? That student of yours couldn't even defeat my Namu. Gojo, yeah well, considering he is still young, I'm not really surprised. So, tell me. How strong is this pet of yours? Shigaraki, you must be joking. If you think you can take him down, then you're dumber than I thought. The Namu is superior to All Might in every way. Greater strength, shock absorption and super regeneration. If you're like your student, you stand no chance against him. Gojo, regeneration ha. Huh? Kind of like a cursed spirit. I don't deny that this thing is strong and hideous looking too. But unfortunately for you, out of me in this thing, I am the strongest. Shigaraki, what? Gojo looks back at the top of the stairs seeing that Izuku and the others have reached the rest of the class. Gojo, good, Izuku is at the top of the stairs. Hopefully he should get a good view. He turns back to Shigaraki and the Namu. Gojo, now that they are out of the way, guess I'll be a little more rough. Gojo, Jutsushiki Juntan Ao. Jutsushiki Hanton Aka. The students watch from the top of the stairs. Mina, what is he doing? Siro, yeah, he's just standing there. I'll go help. Siro is about to move forward. Izuku, Siro stay back. Siro, huh, why? Izuku, don't take another step forward. Izuku, whatever he is doing, it's best you stay back. The students are puzzled by this. Izuku, because from what I can feel, that monster has already lost. Gojo, Kaioshiki. Gojo, Murasaki. The attack created by Gojo is fired at the Namu. Shigaraki, what the hell is that thing? Kurajiri, get us out of here. Kurajiri grabs Shigaraki using his portal and narrowly escapes the blast. The Namu on the other hand, blindly charges into the blast, but, unable to block it, the Namu is caught inside the blast disintegrating instantly. A huge blast of air bursts throughout the USJ and the students are in awe at the performance of Gojo. Izuku, haha so this is what he wanted to show me. Such power, I can't wait to use that one day. Gojo, yay. That settles everything. Or, I guess it doesn't. After a couple of hours, the rest of the heroes and the emergency services arrive at the USJ. Sukachi, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, that's everyone except for that girl with the busted up arm. Let's go ahead and get these students back to the campus. They've been through a lot, we don't need to question them right away. Su hops over to Tsukachi. Su, detective, what about Mr. Aizawa? Tsukachi, the bones in his arms are splintered and he appears to have so severe facial fracturing. Fortunately there doesn't seem to be any severe brain damage. But, his orbital floor has been completely destroyed. We have no way to know whether or not his eyesight will be impaired once he is out. Mina walks over to Tsukachi. Mina, um, sir, what about 13? Tsukachi, there's no need for you to worry there. Despite some damage to the back, 13 is going to pull through, good as new. In an explosive fury, Katsuki runs to Tsukachi, grabbing him by the trench coat. Katsuki, what about Izumi, Ha, huh? Katsumi, Katsuki, settle down. Tsukachi, she'll pull through. Despite some severe bruising all over her body and some broken bones on her arm, she'll recover quickly with recovery girl's treatment. Katsuki lets go of Tsukachi's trench coat. Katsuki, TCH good. You're a raka, hey, sir. Tsukachi, yes. Uraraka, what about Gojo? Tsukachi, don't worry about him, we're just needing to ask him some things. Now then, let's get you all back to the campus. Everyone, okay. Tsukachi turns towards his colleague. Tsukachi, Sansa, I still have some business to take care of, I'll leave this to you, okay. Sansa, yes sir. Mina and Uraraka look at the police officer. Mina, he's a cat. Uraraka, ah, look at his bell. Katsuki looks back at the USJ. Katsuki, I can't believe she got hurt that badly. All because of those pathetic villains. When I face them again, I'll give them some payback. We cut back to the UA campus, where Izuku and Gojo are seated in a private office. Izuku, I'm sorry that I wasn't strong enough to defeat that Namu. Gojo, hey, don't worry about it. Besides, you were nearly out of stamina after using blue several times. You only just started to know how to utilize the six eyes. I'm not expecting you to be unstoppable just yet. 
And after all, you got to witness your next goal. Izuku, my next goal. Gojo, being able to use that move on your own. And also using a domain expansion. Izuku, a domain expansion. Gojo, I'll tell you about it later. The door opens and Tsukachi walks through it. Izuku, Tsukachi. Tsukachi, huh? Oh, I'm sorry, do we know each other? Izuku, oh, sorry, never mind. So, what am I here for anyway? Tsukachi, well, we need to ask you some questions in regard to what happened to you at the USJ. Specifically, the dead bodies we found. Izuku, dead bodies. Tsukachi opens a folder and shows Izuku the various pictures of the corpses. Izuku upon looking at the pictures, realizes those were the so-called curses. Tsukachi, now, before we continue, I'm here to clarify that you didn't kill them. Izuku, what? Tsukachi, the reports from the coroner's office state that these people were dead long before they attacked you. Izuku, but, how is this possible? Tsukachi, we're not sure how this happened, but it's a likely possibility that a villain you didn't see was present during that fight and caused this to happen. But ignoring that, you had an encounter with this creature called a Namu, is that correct? Izuku, yes. Tsukachi, now when you were fighting it, did you happen to know anything about it? Izuku, no. Only thing I knew was that guy covered in hands said he had shock absorption. Tsukachi, was this also in line with what you saw Gojo? Gojo, yeah, that guy said something about him having super strength and regeneration as well. Tsukachi, I see, thank you both for your cooperation. And Gojo, don't be hard on yourself, it wasn't your fault for their deaths. Tsukachi leaves the room, leaving the two Gojos. Izuku, I just can't get the feeling away though. Gojo, don't worry Izuku, I know exactly what's happened to them. Izuku, ha, huh? Gojo, back in the old era, there was one curse who had the ability to manipulate the fundamentals of the soul. Izuku, the soul. Gojo, this ability would allow him to morph anybody he touched in any way he wanted, whether it was unlocking their ability to use cursed energy, or distort the shape of the soul. We find ourselves in a musty bar where Kirijiri appears while Shigaraki emerges with his left leg destroyed as a result of Gojo's attack. Shigaraki, oh, whatever that attack was, my leg has been completely destroyed. All those underlings wiped out, and even Namu was destroyed. We failed, those kids weren't just for show, they're the real deal. But most of all, that Gojo guy, he was exactly as strong as you said he was. He stares up at a monitor with no image, only the voice of a man who is presumed to be the leader. Uh, this is why I told you about his ability, Tamura Shigaraki. But even with the amount of people we had, we were still underprepared. Shigaraki, if only it was All Might who showed up instead of him. The Namu could have killed him easily. While I do agree with you, at least you have a grasp of what he is capable of. But more importantly, what about the boy, Shigaraki, the kid bearing the same name? He wasn't nearly as strong, but he held his own against the Namu. But even still, he annoyed me quite a bit with his witty remarks. Well, at least you used the cheap league of villains instead of our own. Listen well to Mira Shigaraki. Gather the elite, find new allies that show much promise. Take as much time as you need, and when you do find the elite of the League of Villains, contact me as soon as you can. Shigaraki understood master. The call is stopped and we cut to a dark and sterile room. The two size master. Are you sure it was okay to shape the souls of those villains? They may have been low level, but they were still useful assets to us. The it matters not Dr. Garaki, they served their purpose. Dr. Garaki, even still, you could have risked our entire organization just by being there. The like I said, it matters not. Even if someone did see me, they wouldn't live to tell the tale. Dr. Garaki, but I don't get it master. Why waste your time with the students at UA? Wouldn't it be best for you to focus your plans without drawing attention to us? Because, the unsealing of Satoru Gojo has changed my plans significantly. There was a reason why I sealed him inside the prison realm in the first place. So dealing with him is a top priority. Besides, his student could be of great use to us. Dr. Garaki, how so? Satoru Gojo is a man who can kill everyone in the world with little to no effort. But his strong ties to protecting those, less than us, are an annoyance. Meanwhile, his pupil despite being his descendant, is still young. He can be molded, influenced to understand why it is we do these things. Satoru Gojo's students back then may have stopped us before, but his new pupil yeah. will be the one to decide the fate of this world. While the man is concealed in shadows, a noticeable scar can be seen on his forehead. A straight line going across his forehead with stitches on some parts of the scar. Dr. Garaki, as you wish. Master Kenjaku. We cut to the next few days after the USJ, each of the students having been given a couple of weeks off while UA improves their security system. Izuku can be seen walking through the city streets on his phone messaging his mom, still continuing the lie that he was in a different high school. 
Izuku, hey mum, how are things? I heard the USJ got attacked. Inko, yeah, those villains hurt Izumi real badly. Izuku, is she okay? Inko, she's recovering, she should be out. Just before school starts up again. Izuku, I wish I could visit, but school's just been keeping me busy. Inko, I understand. But hey, once the semester is done, why don't you come and visit? Izuku, I'll see what I can do mum. Inko, okay sweetie. Anyway, I have to get going. Something has just come up. Izuku, okay mom. He closes his messages app. Izuku, sighs. I wonder if that thing that came up was a robbery or something. Hey Gojo. Izuku, hum. He turns to see Uraraka running towards him. Uraraka, well I was going grocery shopping and I saw that you were walking around, so I figured, why not? So, what are you doing? Izuku, oh, well I was just walking around, looking for something to do. Uraraka, oh, well if you want, I was going to get some food before I head home. Do you want to eat something? Izuku, hum, sure, I've got nothing on my mind. The two start walking together, spending their time eating and talking. They walk on the sidewalk next to a cemetery. Uraraka, oh hey. Izuku, hum, Uraraka, can we stop by here for a sec? Izuku, ooh, sure. Uraraka, don't worry, it won't take long. The two walk into the cemetery and Uraraka lights some incense at a grave while kneeling down. She claps her hands together and begins to pray. She kneels there praying for five minutes before standing back up. Uraraka, sorry about that. Izuku, it's alright. Who are you praying to? Uraraka, oh, well, you see. Uraraka tilts her head down. Uraraka, I was praying to my mum and dad. Izuku, ha. Huh? Uraraka, well, my parents died when I was young. And since I didn't have any living relatives, I was looked after at an orphanage until I was of age to live on my own. Izuku stands there, not sure how to respond or what to even say, but he asks her something without realizing it. Izuku, how did they die? Uraraka stays silent for a little bit before telling him. Uraraka, they died to a villain. Izuku stays silent. Uraraka, the villain tried to hurt me, for whatever reason I'm not sure. But my parents got in the way. That villain, he did something to them. I'm not sure, but when he touched them, they just stopped being themselves. I ran away and got away from that man. But every day, I think to myself, if I had just given myself up to that man, my parents would be alive. Izuku, I'm sorry that happened to you. Uraraka, don't be. Besides, that's why I want to be a hero. Uraraka, so that no one else has to go through what I went through. Izuku couldn't help but feel admiration towards her. Izuku, thank you for telling me. And just so you know, you can count on me to always have your back. Uraraka smiles back at him. Uraraka, I'm glad. Izuku's phone starts buzzing and it reveals to be a call from Gojo. Izuku, hello. Gojo, Izuku, you answered, good. Because I've got something important for you to help me with. Izuku, hum. What do you need my help with? Gojo, well, the Public Safety Commission has just given me my first secret assignment and I asked if you could come along. Izuku, seriously. Gojo, yep, so come home as soon as you can. The operation is on tonight. Izuku, I see. Gojo, great. He hangs up the call. Izuku, sorry Uraraka, something has just come up, I better get going. Uraraka, that's alright, see you soon Gojo. Izuku starts walking in the opposite direction and heads to his apartment. When he reaches his apartment, he opens the door to see Gojo and Yokimaru sitting at the table. Gojo eating some sweets while Yokimaru drinks his coffee. Gojo, you made it? Good. Now we can get to business. Izuku, who is this? Yokimaru gets up from his seat. Yokimaru, it's a pleasure to meet you Satoru Gojo. My name is Yokimaru. I'm a part of the Public Safety Commission that specializes in hero affairs. But you can just call it the HPSC. Izuku, sounds like a mouthful. Yokimaru, you have no idea. Right, now that both of you have arrived, let's get started. For your first assignment, Yokimaru sits opposite of the two, one of them who are inventively listening to Yokimaru. Izuku, so, exactly what are we dealing with in this assignment? Yokimaru, I'm glad you asked, unlike someone here. Gojo, huh? Yokimaru, anyway, your first assignment is going to involve taking on a dangerous group of individuals. This group has been a thorn on our side for a while. The Shai Hasekai. Gojo, hum? The Shai Hasekai. Yokimaru, yes. You see, when quirks first started appearing, the Yakuza largely recruited those who have these abilities. They became an even bigger problem for law enforcement. But when the profession of hero became more and more popularized, law enforcement were able to disperse most criminal activity conducted by Yakuza groups. In time, most of these groups would either be disbanded and arrested, or hide in the shadows of society. The Shai Hasekai is one of these organizations that went into hiding. 
Gojo, okay, so what's so dangerous about them? I mean, no offense, but the Yakuza doesn't sound that scary. Yokimaru, you would be right about that, if it wasn't for one thing. He opens an envelope and hands them a picture. Gojo, who's he? Yokimaru, that is the new leader of the Shai Hasekai. Overhaul. Izuku, overhaul. Yokimaru, we don't know much about his background or who his parents are. What we do know is that his quirk is considered extremely dangerous. He can disassemble anything he touches, as well as reassemble it in any configuration he desires, effectively giving him full control over matter. Gojo, I see, so you want us to take him down, right? Yokimaru, precisely, but you also have a secondary objective. Gojo, hum. He reaches into his pocket and grabs a see-through plastic bag containing a small red bullet. Izuku, what's this? Yokimaru, during an encounter with a low-level villain, we found out that he was sold this by the Shai Hasekai. Upon further inspection, we learned that this is no ordinary bullet. This bullet is capable of destroying a person's quirk factor from the cellular level. Gojo, must be some serious bullet. Yokimaru, this particular bullet only temporarily destroys the quirk factor. However, if the bullet gets further development, we believe he could make one that could permanently destroy the quirk factor. We need you to keep this quiet. If the public found about about these bullet, it would only cause panic. If the villains found out about this, they would try to do everything in their power to get their hands on it. Izuku, is there any other information you can give us, specifically about the bullets? Yokimaru, so far, that's all we have, we'll update you on any details when we find out. Any other questions? The two shake their heads indicating they have nothing further to ask. Yokimaru, good, now let's take this guy down. Gojo and Izuku are walking through the city streets, heading to the address they were told to go to by Yokimaru. Izuku, so Gojo-sensei. Gojo, hum. Izuku, how exactly do you know that Yokimaru guy? Gojo, well, he approached me after my exam to personally give me my license. He's also the guy that convinced Yue to give you an acceptance letter. Izuku, hum. Now that you mention it, you never told me what you exactly did to pass the exam. Gojo, hum. Well, we flash back to the day of Gojo's exam. Yokimaru, okay Gojo, we'll first need to evaluate what level your power is at. Your objective here is to destroy all of these robots. Depending on how fast you are at completing this will determine your mark. Gojo, okay, sounds easy enough. Yokimaru, normally we would have you do other tests like saving citizens from villains, but we're on a bit of a time crunch. You may begin the exam. The robots 10 stories in height begin to approach Gojo. Gojo, okay, let's get this done quickly. Gojo, Jutsushiki Junta now. The robots begin to collapse into each other blowing up from the implosion. The people applying to be heroes are shocked by this, even the judges are shocked by this. Flashback end. Izuku, wait, that's it. Dojo, well, there was some other stuff I had to do afterwards, but yeah, that was pretty much the exam. Izuku, huh, perhaps I should have just waited until I was old enough to do that test. The pair stop walking and stand in front of a large building. It's shaped like that of a large facility. Dojo, well then, let's get this show on the road. Gojo knocks on the door. Behind the door, noise that sounds like someone falling over can be heard. Uh, Dedoro, open the door and find out who it is. Dedoro, Fiyine. Dedoro opens the door. Dedoro, hello. Gojo, good evening, we're here to deliver a pizza that was delivered to this address. Dedoro, huh, pizza, we never ordered. Gojo kicks the door open and knocks out Dedoro. Izuku, ha, huh? Gojo-sensei, why did you do that whole gag if you were just going to kick down the door? Gojo, hey, you got to have some sort of entrance. Uh, what the hell? Two members of the Shai Hasekai spot the pair at the open entrance. Uh, Damn it, we're being attacked. You, you, you don't need to tell me twice, Soramitsu. You grabs his gun and starts shooting at Gojo but the bullets can only bounce off. You, what? Soramitsu, damn it. Soramitsu rushes towards them and attempts to punch Gojo but he is stopped midair. Soramitsu, what the hell? Gojo, sorry you too, but I'm after your boss, not his underlings. Gojo, Jutsushiki Hantanaka. Soramitsu is blasted away from the pair and is slammed into you, both getting knocked out. Gojo, sighs for such a dangerous organization. They really aren't that strong. Izuku, that's because you keep one shouting them. Gojo, yeah, but I mean, it would still be helpful to have them fight back. In another area, we see Overhaul stand over an operating table, his scalpels covered in drops of blood. The door to the lab opens to reveal a small, bird-masked man approach Overhaul. Mimic, sir, we have a bit of a problem. Overhaul, him. Mimic, it seems that someone is breaking into our complex. Overhaul, the police. Mimic, no. Overhaul, the heroes. Mimic, well, he's a hero. Overhaul, a singular hero. Mimic, he's also got a kid with him. Overhaul, and this is an issue, why? Mimic, well, 
he took down three of the eight bullets. Overhaul, three. Mimic, yes sir, Dedoro, you and Soramitsu. Overhaul, I see. Hirono, prepare our getaway truck. Hirono, overhaul. Overhaul. If this hero has taken down three of the eight bullets, then this hero is tougher than I expected. Even if they did have weak quirks. Plus, if this hero is attacking us, he must have some idea about the quirk destroying bullet. I can't risk having my operations being foiled by a hero and a child. Shin, grab the bullets. He begins to walk away. Overhaul and grab Eri. Back with Gojo and Izuku, we see them walking around the complex, looking through each room. Gojo, size why does this guy have to have so many rooms? Izuku, you found anything yet? Izuku, not yet, Gojo sensei. Izuku walks to another room, however, upon entering the room, his eyes widen at the scene. A dimly lit room, with an operating table covered in blood. Izuku, what the hell? Gojo walks behind him. Gojo, you found anything? Izuku couldn't speak, he could only stare at the sight of the operating table. Izuku, no, not yet anyway. Gojo, okay, let's look somewhere else. Izuku, right. The two continue to walk through the complex, until they are met with four individuals blocking both sides of the hallway. Gojo, huh, seeing that we found the enemies, I guess we're going in the right direction. Tengai, I do apologies for this, but I'm afraid you won't be leaving here alive. Gojo, oh, quite the intimidating voice you got there. Tengai, you see, overhaul's operations for this quirk-infested world require that any hero trying to bring him to justice must be eliminated. I do wish we didn't have to do this, but I'm afraid you dug your own graves by coming here. Gojo, Izuku, you think you can handle those two in front of you? Izuku, yeah, I've improved since the USJ. I won't go down that easily this time. Gojo smirks. Gojo, then go nuts kid. Izuku, right. Izuku starts rushing towards the two villains in front of him. Toya, Rikia, get him. Rikia, time to send you to hell kid. Rikia throws a punch at Izuku, but he dodges the punch. Izuku, Kokusen. Toya, you bastard. Toya rushes at him swinging his sword down attempting to slice him in half. But the sword stops in midair. Toya, what the hell? Izuku, a sword? Seriously? Come on. For a member of the most infamous Yakuza group, I didn't think you would need to rely on something like a sword. Still though, he grabs the blade of the sword. Izuku, I give you points for trying. He snaps the sword in half. Toya, damn it. He pulls out two knives from his side. Toya, you are one cocky little brat. Toya, I can't wait to spill your guts all over the floor. Gojo, guess he's having fun. Maybe I should have some too. Tengai, your student is quite formidable. Let's see how you handle one of our strongest fighters. Rappa, now's your time to shine. Rappa punches his fists together. Gojo, ha, huh, unloading the big guns early. Now this is exciting. Rappa, show me your strength, hero. Aura, the punches are stopped thanks to infinity, but Rappa due to the speed of his punches, doesn't notice. Rappa, no way. How are you still standing? An uninjured. Gojo, oh, that. I'll tell you, but I'll tell you later. Come on. Let's continue this dance of ours. Rappa, a true warrior's honor lies in his actions in battle. A true warrior doesn't need weapons to win. Only his strength. And right now, Rappa smiles under his mask. Rappa, you get me. Izuku on his end continues to dodge the various striking attacks from Toya's blades. Izuku, your little toys aren't going to hurt me you know. Toya, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Rikia, now. Rikia, aura. Rikia attempts to attack from behind with Toya attacking from the front. But the attacks are stopped. Izuku, sighs a shame. Oh well, you guys were fun for a while. He punches the two Yakuza members. Izuku, Kokusen. Both villains are thrown through the wall. Izuku, phew that was easy. Back with Gojo, Rappa continues to send punching barrages at Gojo, but the punches continue to get stopped by his infinity. Rappa, aura 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 aura. Tengai, that fool, he keeps attacking him, but can't cause a single injury. Gojo, okay, I'm getting bored now. Gojo, Jutsushiki Hanton Aka. Rappa is sent flying towards Tengai, but he is stopped thanks to a barrier he created. Tengai, you're quite impressive hero. Your quirk is rather extraordinary. Not anyone can stand against Rappa's punching barrage, even more so not take any damage. Gojo, hmm. I assume based on how he forcefully stopped midair, you have some sort of barrier power. Tengai, you're correct in that assumption. But, unlike that small-brained idiot, I do not make such mistakes. You will bear witness to the terror that is the shy Haseka. Izuku punches him in the cheek, sending him into the wall. Gojo, ah, I see you finished dealing with those two. Izuku, sorry Gojo-sensei, that guy was talking way too much. Gojo, yeah, lately I've been noticing that. I mean, it's a battle, don't waste time by talking. 
Now then, let's go take care of this guy. Overhaul. Shin, Mimic and Kirona walk through the hall in an attempt to escape. Mimic, I can't get a hold of the others. Do you think they were taken down? Shin, I'm sure they are handling the situation. Kirono, but it's possible that they have been taken down. Overhaul, if they have been taken down, then they were of no use to me. Mimic, boss. Overhaul, I took them in as a lead of the Shai Hasekai, because I believed they had the strength to help in my crusade, to eliminate all quirks from this world. But if they can be taken down so easily, then they have no part to play from my mission. Mimic, boss, how could you say that? After all the loyalty and devotion they gave you, you're just going to throw them away. Overhaul grabs Mimic by the throat. Overhaul, loyalty and devotion are not good enough. Those traits aren't enough to help me rid this world of the disease that is quirks and help humanity evolve. And if you think that those traits will save you, you're sadly mistaken. Mimic struggles to breathe and Overhaul continues to squeeze his neck until it cracks. He turns towards Shin and Kirono. Shin, you, you killed him. Overhaul, let's hope you don't make the same mistake. He drops the body on the ground with the body appearing grotesque and disfigured. We cut to the three walking towards the exit of the complex. Overhaul, good. We've made it to the exit, now we just need to. Gojo, yo. Overhaul jumps upon hearing the voice. Gojo, don't think that you can go scurrying away like that. Overhaul turns towards Gojo. Overhaul, of all the heroes that could be here, why does it have to be him? Flashback. Uh, Overhaul, I want you to keep an eye out for a particular hero should they attack you. Overhaul, a hero. What hero would make you worried? Uh, this is a hero I have encountered before. He may not seem much, but he is powerful. Even someone like All Might cannot defeat him. Flashback end. Overhaul. The hero he was worried about is standing right in front of me. Satoru Gojo. Get him. Kirono. Kirono obeying Overhaul's orders rushes towards Gojo. Kirono tries to hit Gojo with his hair, but it stopped midair. Kirono, what? Gojo hits him in the face knocking him out. Shin, Kirono. Shin starts shooting his handgun at Izuku, but he dodges the bullets. Izuku, Kokusen. Shin gets slammed into the wall. Izuku, it's over bird brain. All your lackeys are defeated, and it's two against one. Overhaul stands there, not uttering a single word. Overhaul, no, I have not lost. It doesn't matter how many of you there are. You will die here. He transforms his hand extending it in an attempt to touch Izuku. Izuku, not preparing for the attack, fails to activate infinity and Overhaul touches his arm. Upon feeling his arm being grabbed, he feels a weird sensation on his arm and instinctively smacks it away. Gojo, Izuku, you okay? Izuku, I'm fine. But this guy, he tried to do something to me. Gojo, huh? Izuku, the sensation I felt just now. He, he used cursed energy. Gojo could only stand there. Gojo, I see. So that's your ability. You don't have a quirk. It's your curse technique. Overhaul, I see you've figured me out. While I am annoyed that the heroes who are after me still believe I have a filthy quirk, it is true. I no longer have the filth that was my quirk but something far greater, a power that can reshape humanity, unlike the filth that is quirks. Gojo, that's why you developed the bullets. Overhaul, correct, but I needed help in order to realize my goal. He turns towards the body behind him, a small body of a person no bigger than 3 feet 5 inches, with long white hair, a little girl unconscious and pale. Overhaul, she had the power that would help me in my crusade. I had to do what I believed was necessary to save humanity. Her blood was very useful in making those bullets. Izuku gets a sudden realization in his mind. The blood on the operating table. Izuku, that was hers, wasn't it? Izuku, that blood on the table. You hurt her, didn't you? Overhaul, it was necessary. To help humanity evolve in the right direction. Izuku stares at Overhaul with malice. He takes his blindfold off. Izuku, no human would willingly hurt a child. You're nothing more than a monster. Izuku, you'll pay for what you did to her. Overhaul rips off his mask. Overhaul, you will not stop me from achieving true perfection. Overhaul transforms his arms into swords and attempts to slash Izuku. Izuku can only dodge the attacks. Overhaul, what's wrong sorcerer? What happened to all that confidence? He is too busy focused on Izuku to notice Gojo behind him. King hitting him in the back of the head. Overhaul spits blood on the floor. Overhaul, I've got to hand it to you. You certainly did some damage just now. The wound at the back of his head heals. Overhaul, however, my technique allows me to heal such damage. In this moment, you stand no chance sorcerer. Overhaul continues to attack the pair with him being in the middle. Flashback. Overhaul, you've always said that the power of these quirks is a sickness. And I do agree, humanity was not meant to evolve like this. It is simply repulsing. 
I want your help in bringing humanity back to square one, and help me cultivate their evolution in the correct path. Flashback and overhaul, yes, I will do what is necessary to achieve that goal. Izuku dodges his continuous attacks and through sheer luck, manages to land a hit. Izuku, Kokusen, overhaul staggers in place, unable to move. Overhaul, what? Gojo, Izuku now. Izuku, right. The pair begin to continuously attack overhaul. Overhaul, I don't have time to undo the damage. Every strike is dealt with greater power. What is this? What is this fresh inspiration? Is this death? Flashback. Uh, overhaul. The power that you now possess is something far greater than what you had before. However, that doesn't make you unstoppable. Should someone have enough power, they can kill you without trouble. So listen carefully to this tip I have for you. There is a technique that can change the course of a battle. While the amount of energy needed is troublesome, its payoff is worth it. Flashback and overhaul. So this is what you meant. Then I guess it's now or never. He stands there wide open for the two to attack him, until his mouth opens seemingly with small hands inside his mouth. Overhaul, Ryoiki Tenkai. Hands begin to emerge from the ground and surround the two and cover the space in darkness. Izuku, what? He looks around the dark space, looking around unsure as to what is happening. Overhaul, Jihei Endonka. So that concludes our second part of our series. Stay tuned for the third part of the series. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.